This video demonstrates UMA, the User Managed Access Web Protocol, and it shows how you, as an online personal cloud service provider, can protect your users' resources and put easy control of online data sharing into their hands using UMA's Privacy by Design features. First, we'll show how a person named Alice shares data from her personal cloud app with a job-finding website. We call this Alice to Alice sharing because she's the sole user of all the apps in question. There are three apps in this picture, Alice's personal data store, her data sharing control hub, and a job finding app. Her personal data store is Smart PDS. The UMA protocol calls this a resource server. Her data sharing control hub is Smart AM. The UMA protocol calls this an authorization server. The job finding app she wants to use is Career Monster. The UMA protocol calls this a client. By the way, UMA is based on OAuth, and these protocol names are the same as in OAuth. Meet Alice. Here's her webmail inbox. Alice uses Smart PDS to hold her personal profile data. She can check, correct, and enhance that data here. For example, adding her middle name to the profile. She's also storing some data about her schooling, including a personal copy of her university transcript. Even if Alice is managing resources in a hundred different web locations, UMA enables the data sharing hub to be centralized. For example, one of her other resource servers might live at her university where it houses her official transcript. Official transcripts are an example of personal data that has to be provided by a trustworthy third party. Alice knows ahead of time that she'll be using Career Monster to apply for jobs, so she can pre-authorize its access to her personal profile, giving it read-only access. Note that this pop-up window is actually run by Smart AM. Smart PDS has been set up to outsource protection of data to this central hub. Alice can look at the full Smart AM web app to check out what apps have been given access to data coming from any resource server. Here we can see that her sharing policy includes whitelisting Career Monster when she herself is using that app. Alice doesn't experience this as any kind of heavyweight policy configuration process. She's just setting and viewing her preferences. She can view, modify, and even revoke permissions right next to each of the data fields being managed. Now it's time for Alice to hunt for jobs, so she visits Career Monster. She likes the look of this job so she decides to apply. The Career Monster app knows how to pick up user profile information by working with a personal data store API. Because Alice already said it's okay for the app to retrieve her full name, it can do this automatically. Of course, it's not all that hard simply to type her name into a web app instead. But if her name changes later, everything can be kept in sync with no extra effort. And if she were visiting Career Monster from a mobile phone, it would be more convenient to share data automatically than to type it on a tiny keyboard. Because Alice hasn't yet said it's okay to share her transcript data with Career Monster versus her name, she's put through an approval flow at Smart AM that's similar to ordinary OAuth. Once she approves this retrieval, Smart AM stores her new policy preference, and she can look at or modify the setting later if she likes. Note that her transcript data is likely to change often as she finishes classes and exams, and so it's especially valuable to set up the ability to share a feed of that information rather than a copy that goes stale. All of these sharing-related interactions are stored in Smart AM for Alice to look at. This log could be presented in a number of ways, such as an interactive dashboard, or it could be exported. We just saw how Alice can centrally manage, control, and monitor sharing of all kinds of data with applications that she herself uses. This feels much like OAuth, but has the advantage of letting her set up sharing preferences proactively from a single central hub, and even reuse those preferences across different resource servers as she wishes. Reusing policies for various data sources becomes especially important if Alice wants to share data with other people and organizations in her life, for example, family members, doctors, and accountants. 
This is something ordinary OAuth and OpenID Connect don't do, and most apps, such as for calendar and photo management, do a terrible job of letting users control and enable sharing with others. Now let's show what it might look like for Alice to share data with Bob, the hiring manager. Unsurprisingly, we call this Alice to Bob sharing. Meet Bob. Here's his webmail inbox. He's received an email notification that someone has applied for a job he posted on CareerMonster. He takes a look at who put in a job application, and it turns out to be Alice. He realizes she didn't supply phone information, which he needs, so he tries to import the needed information himself. CareerMonster has been refused access behind the scenes because SmartAM blocks access unless it's got a sharing preference on file that says it's okay to share. So CareerMonster redirects Bob over to SmartAM to ask him to confirm that he wants to request access. This is necessary because SmartAM may need him to supply identity claims about himself in order for it to figure out if he's worthy of access. Alice notices that she's gotten an email notification from SmartAM that says Bob tried to access her phone number. Alice doesn't have to grant access to this data, but she decides to allow Bob to get access to it whenever he's using CareerMonster as a client. Looking at SmartAM later, Alice can see evidence that Bob requested access, that she granted it, and that her current settings allow this access. She can revoke or modify it anytime she likes from various locations in SmartAM. We just saw how Alice can centrally and proactively manage, control, and monitor sharing of all kinds of personal data with others. This feels much like the way we share calendars and photo album feeds with others now, except that instead of using so-called private or unlisted URLs, the security mechanism has OAuth level strength. Alice can also set criteria for access that require Bob and others to supply claims about themselves, even non-uniquely identifying claims such as, this person is a citizen of the UK. Uma has profiled the OpenID Connect technology as a way to gather these claims in order to drive policy decisions off of them. Uma has a growing number of independent implementations, including open source, and we're also conducting interop activities. We hope you'll visit the Uma Wiki to read the specs and case studies, and consider joining the group as a participant. It's free. We invite you to engage with us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Thanks for your attention. This video was produced by the Kantara Initiative's UMA Workgroup. We want to thank Kantara and the members of the UMA Workgroup for their support, along with Cloud Identity Limited for creating the UMA-enabled sample apps we showed you, and Daza Greenwood for his video production support.